how you doing, Econ students? This is Jacob Clifford. Now, I'm assuming you just watched my Econ Movies episode where I used Jurassic Park to explain the four market structures. But if you're enrolled in a college or AP microeconomics class, you're not done. You're also gonna have to be able to draw all the graphs. So let's go over monopolies and perfect competition. Here we go, let's do a bonus round. Let's start with perfect competition because that's what your teacher professor is going to start with. You already know the graph for a competitive market. It's just supply and demand. But we're not looking for the market. We're looking for an individual firm. Remember, an individual egg farmer has no control of the price, which means they're a price taker. The result is a horizontal price at the market price of $3 a dozen. No individual firm can raise the price above that because they're selling all the same products and there's no reason to lower the price because they're too small a firm. It's not like they can like lower the price and corner the market. So that horizontal line is the price and it's also the demand. That's how much people are willing and able to pay. And it's the marginal revenue. If they sell another dozen for $3, they get additional $3. Sell another one for $3, they get an additional $3. So the horizontal line is everything. It's the marginal revenue, the demand, the average revenue, and the price. That's right, Mr. Dart. You can learn more about him in another video. So that's the graph you need to know for a firm in perfect competition. So now let's talk about a monopoly. In this case, the market is the firm because there's only one seller. So the demand curve is downward sloping. We can charge anything we want, 2,000 a day, 10,000 a day, and people will pay it. And yes, they can charge any price they want, but they're still bound by demand. For example, if they charge $10,000 a day, only a few people are gonna be willing and able to pay that. If they wanna get more customers, they have to lower the price down to let's say $6,000 a day. What, we'll have a, a coupon day or something. Now here's where it gets tricky. You might think if they sell a ticket to someone for $6,000 a day, then their additional revenue is gonna be 6,000. But it's not because they're not price discriminating. They're charging everybody the same price. In other words, if they charge $10,000 a day, yes, that person's gonna pay that. But if they charge $6,000 a day, they have to charge both people $6,000, including the person who'd be willing to pay 10,000. That means the marginal revenue is less than the demand curve. And again, here's why. To sell another unit, they have to lower the price of the next unit and the units they could have sold for a higher price. This is a graph for any firm that's a price maker, so a monopoly and monopolistic competition. Now here's a trick that's gonna help you remember this. In my Econ Movies episode, I talked about a monopoly being like a T-Rex. If you focus on a T-Rex's hand, what do you notice? I see demand and marginal revenue. The point is, there's two graphs that you need to know. First is a perfect competitive firm, a horizontal demand that's equal to Mr. Darp. There's also a monopoly that has a downward sloping demand curve and a marginal revenue that's less. Bonus, bonus round! Along with the demand and the marginal revenue, you also need to know what happens to total revenue. For a perfectly competitive firm where the price is constant, the total revenue increases at a constant rate. If you sell another unit for $3, total revenue goes up by $3. Another unit, $3, total revenue goes up by $3. But in a monopoly where the marginal revenue is falling, the total revenue looks like this. The total revenue increases at a decreasing rate and then hits a maximum and then starts to fall. So a monopoly will maximize total revenue where the marginal revenue hits zero. And using the total revenue test that you learned back in unit two, that means this is the elastic range and this is the inelastic range. But remember, the goal of every firm is not to maximize total revenue, it's to maximize profit. But to do that, we need cost curves, which I go over in other videos. Okay, I hope this helped you understand the graphs for perfect competition and monopolies. If you need more help, take a look at the practice questions and free responses inside my ultimate review packet. Lastly, if I'm helping you learn and love economics, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Till next time.